Okay, hello everyone. I want to start uh, giving just a few words about uh, give, uh, to give a bit a little of background of what we are doing in human molecular genetics lab, and then to introduce the work. Uh, First of all, in uh, in our lab, uh, we work with primary cilia biology, studying uh, how it is formed and how it's function. And uh, primary cilia are organelles that are present almost within uh, every cell in the cell body, in the body. And uh, it hosts uh, it, uh, a lot of receptors and signaling pathways associated with these receptors that, may inf that influence a lot of processes within the cells and the organism, just, such as differentiation, metabolism, and homeostasis. Um, the patients that present uh, the mutations that uh, affect the uh, genes uh, related to formation or function of primary cilia and generate uh, a bunch of uh, diseases that are called in, in altogether ciliopathies. Uh, of, of that, uh, among them, the one that we are studying at the Human Molecular Genetics Lab is the Butterbill syndrome. And one of the manifestations in this syndrome is obesity. So we think is that if that we uh, study the, how obesity is developed in these syndromes, we can give also some information on, on non-syndromic obesity, such as common obesity and the complications that may arrive from it. So if we talk about obesity, we're talking about in part of a white adipose tissue, that is the site of accumulation of energy within the body in the form of uh, neutral lipids. And it is also a site of hormone secretion and have other functions like insulation and mechanical uh, resistance. Uh, during obesity, uh, the adipose tissue, the white adipose tissue expands, but it can expand in different ways, okay? If the, uh, there is a, an increase in cell number of an, an increase in differentiation, then the uh, tissue expands in a more healthy way because the, the the, the fat is stored in, in different, in more, uh, in a higher number of cells. But in contrast, if the fat is accumulating within the cells that are already present in the tissue, uh, the, the cells uh, begin to expand and may, the, this may affect uh, their function and also may lead to cell death with uh, uh, in, sorry, inflammation of the tissue and dysfunction of the tissue. And uh, this is a thing, this is thought to give rise to uh, the complications, that, for example, type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So um, we are now studying the process of adipogenesis that we think if we can uh, know how it, is, um, how it is regulated, maybe we can modulate it and uh, shift the, the, the process of fat accumulation towards a, a more healthy uh, setup, okay? So adipogenesis is the process of generating of new adipocytes from the um, generation of new uh, precursors and also it, their differentiation, okay? And the, the, the differentiation of adipocytes involves the accumulation of fat first in different uh, small uh, lipid droplets within the cytoplasm, but then uh, to then, that then uh, coalesce or join together and form a unique uh, lipid droplet within the cell. In particular, we are interested in the study of um, the, the pathway that I mentioned in the bottom part of the slide uh, that is uh, related to primary cilia biology, okay? So uh, in our lab, this uh, process is studied uh, mainly in um, cell tissue, cell culture, and also using mice models. And during my postdoc, my idea was to introduce the use of zebrafish uh, model to study uh, adipos adipogenesis, uh, as uh, was mentioned before during the workshop. Um, zebrafish is a wonderful model to study in vivo processes because it's transparency. So uh, you can put it in a, in a microscope stage and watch things going on within the tissue. Um, Cerrofish has a white uh, adipose tissue. It, uh, it is developed during larval stages. And here we see an image of uh, adipose tissue being labeled with red. And what we see here is the accumulation of fat, okay? 
And also wanted to mention that white adipose tissue in zebrafish has almost the same characteristics as uh, in mammals, okay? The distribution, it accumulates in several depots along the, the body, and also has similarities uh, from the ultrastructural point of view and also from the gene expression point of view. So um, one of the problems uh, before uh, when I started to work with this is that uh, every, every uh, there was not fish, there were not uh, fish lines uh, developed uh, to label adipocytes. The, all, the, all the visualization of adipose tissue relied on the lipophilic dyes. So we're looking just at fat, not the whole cell. So we, want to, we weren't able to see uh, early, earlier stages of development where there was not accumulation of fat, okay? So the idea was first to develop um, uh, a strain, a, fish, a new fish line, to label uh, the cell membrane uh, of, the, of the adipocytes, okay? So here is where uh, Florencia Levin started to work with us. She was uh, a... Uh, during her grade de degree, she cloned several promoters from genes expressed in adipose tissue. Here I show you the, uh, the one that finally worked out. So uh, we keep, we, we are not working with a fish line that, uh, that uh, has the promoter from this transporter. This is a lipid transporter expressed in adipocytes that direct expression of a, a membrane EGFP. Okay, so here we see some images. Here are some um, larva uh, staying with lipophilic dyes in magenta. And in green, we can see the, um, in green, we can see that the EGFP label is surrounding mature adipocytes within the, uh, within the lab. So then we ask, uh, we, we take a look more, in more detail to this larva and we see that, we saw that, um, EGFP also labels some cells that didn't have a lipophilic staining. So we think of these cells of uh, adipocyte precursors. And uh, it's also um, interesting that these cells have protrusions and also we can see uh, them moving around, okay? And also we saw um, cells that have several lipidic droplets, okay? Uh, suggesting a, 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 an intermediate stage of a differentiation. So then we, we, we try to figure out how we can use this cell, this fish line, to study the process of differentiation in vivo. And here is where Lionel came into stage. Then uh, he suggested to, uh, we can use uh, NIRED and its spectral characteristics to study uh, adipogenesis in vivo. As was mentioned before, NIRED is a lipophilic dye that will stain all the membranes in the cell, all the lipids in the cell. But uh, it has the property that it is, um, it is sensitive to the uh, surroundings polarity, okay? So if we put uh, NIRED in a more uh, polar environment, the, um, the spectrum is shift towards the red, okay? Here we see it in vivo in the cultural cells. Here are some cells that have lipidic droplets within the cytoplasm. If we surround a region with a lipid droplet here in one, we can see the spectrum of this region is uh, blue shifted. And uh, if we take a look at a region without lipid droplets, we can see that the spectrum is more uh, red shifted. So maybe we can use this property uh, to uh, analyze the progression of uh, adipogenesis and the accumulation of, on, of uh, neutral lipids. So the experiment uh, was uh, uh, like this. We stained um, larva of different stages with NIRED. Then we anesthetized them and mount in agarose and do some confocal imaging. Then we do a lambda scan in the microscope and analyze the images using CMFCS and spectral phasers, okay? The expected uh, result will be that we will have three components, two due to NIRED and an extra one due to EGFP, okay? And uh, as was mentioned before also in the workshop, 
the uh, pixels aligned within this triangle will have a mixture of um, uh, the three components, okay? Here I show you, we first analyze the uh, individual components. And here is, uh, there are some images. We first analyze a uh, wild type larva stained with night red. So we get a cloud of pixels in this region that follow a linear, uh, a linear distribution, uh, meaning that we have a combination of uh, that these pixels within this line will have a combination of, of more, uh, uh, more neutral lipids and more polar lipids. And uh, if we analyze only the, the larva the, from, the, from the fish line, we're gonna have the, the cells will uh, give rise to uh, pixels within this region. So we have our three components well separated in the plot. So now we turn to analyze a larva from the fish line stained with night red. Uh, here are some images. And um, one of the things that, uh, okay. So um, one of the things that this uh, allowed us was to segment the uh, cells that express EGFP. It's because night red will stain all the cells in the tissue. So the EGFP uh, label will allow us to individualize the adipocytes that are being uh, during the differentiation and analyze only the night red profile in those cells. So here I show you already a phase of plots from those cells, those isolated cells. And you may notice that uh, the night red profile is quite different. So to be able to compare the profile with among cells, we, um, and because, we only uh, wanted to analyze the narrow profile. We just uh, projected the pixels along this axis, the narrow axis, and generated the, gra the graphs we are looking at in the bottom part, where we can see the uh, percentage of pixels, okay, in the different uh, uh, in the different levels of neutrality. Let's say, okay. Then to analyze and compare between cells, we define the center of mass for these distributions and also arrange. And uh, in that way, we can compare among cells in different, uh, in larva of different stages. Here we see other cells with different accumulation of, uh, all of them have EGFP, but we also see that <coughs> they vary in the night red, uh, in the amount of night red and the, and the profile of night red among them. And here we see uh, the, the, the crude uh, profiles. And in the bottom part, we are looking at um, the plot of the distribution range versus the uh, center of mass of that distribution. So uh, for different and for different uh, ages from different uh, larval stages. So if we see here and for the red dots, this is an early level stage, so we will expect to find uh, adipocytes in early stage of, the, of differentiation. And here we see that uh, these, um, these cells have center of mass that are shifted towards the uh, towards a lower contents of neutral lipids, so more polar lipid profile, and uh, distribution more uh, more tight distribution ranges. But when we go into, when we look at a larva from older stages, we are begin to see distributions that are broader, okay? So we have a mixture of polar lipids and neutral lipids and some cells that have a more narrow distributions and a, a high content of neutral lipids. So this show that uh, this is a, a nice tool to analyze and quantify how the cells uh, pass through the differentiation process in vivo. Uh, luckily, all these results and uh, some other, we, we could publish them this year. And uh, how can we use this tool in our work uh, to analyze this, uh, this uh, pathway? We are not, this is the work of, uh, are being drawn by uh, Lucia and Ileana, that are PhD students in our lab. 
and they are uh, they already generated or are generating these uh, these mutants in fish. So we expect to uh, analyze the differentiation of adipocytes in vivo within these mutants, just crossing uh, crossing lines. And also we can analyze the behavior of these cells in uh, different diets. Okay, if we uh, here is just a graphic showing that. Uh, when we um, put the larva on high fat diets, then we see a shift in the uh, the, the, um, the cells uh, look uh, have more um, neutral lipid profiles uh, shifted toward neutral lipids and more narrower uh, more narrower profiles. So we can analyze, analyze these two using this method. So to 